Today, this aircraft is flying a crucial aid mission to Tuluksak, an isolated native Alaskan community 400 miles west of Anchorage. A fire has cut the village's water supply. 350 residents have no access to drinking water. Now, local companies have stepped up to donate vital supplies. Being without water is a crisis in any circumstance, but when you're talking about rural Alaska in the winter in a pandemic, the need is even more dire. The life-saving cargo is being delivered by a plane that during World War II was used to fly troops behind enemy lines. Its pilot is 24-year-old Alaskan Atticus Madlin. It'd be extremely normal for a DC-3, especially this one, to be carrying paratroopers back in the day. The rails on the side of the aircraft were actually for paratroopers to, to clip into, so it pulled their chute when they jumped out of the airplane. They've never been removed. Careful weight distribution is key to making full use of the aircraft's 6,500-pound payload. You want to get the heaviest part as far forward as you can because it's easy to make it real tail heavy because it is such a long airplane. Oh, I don't know. What do we want next? Even a DC-3 can't take everything the village of Tuluxac like is going to need today. We have got the essentials on the airplane. We got them their water, the stuff they absolutely need. These are the tanks they're going to use for uh, water storage out in Tuluxac. They're just storage tanks, but it's just as important for them. They might have water out there, but if they don't have a way to clean it and store it, it doesn't do them any good. This is the last of the load, so hopefully we're going to get off the ground here soon. Ugh. The plane is loaded to capacity. Now Atticus needs to get it airborne. We got gas, we got oil, we got a load. We're ready to go. Off like a herd of turtles. To look sack is a 300-mile flight over hazardous terrain. Now they're going to do all their before start checklists. And the DC-3 has no computer to monitor component failures. OK, fuel. Full mains and 150 in each aux. OK. 700 total. Master switch. On ship. Beacon and nav lights on. Fire and smoke warning checked. Without autopilot, Atticus will fight the controls through every minute of the two-hour flight. I'm going to turn to the right. OK, here we go. Just a unique airplane. There's nothing that can do what it can do. There's nothing that looks quite like it. It sounds amazing when you're flying it. It sounds amazing when you're outside of it. Anchorage clearance, Douglas 272 Romeo. It's a rare and unique experience to fly a DC-3, and I'm grateful for it. But I'm ready to get in something with some turbine engines sometime soon as well. Okay, hey, mixtures are out of reach. Boost pumps are on. Cow flaps are trail. Flaps are up, indicating up. You got to take your start wherever you can get it in this industry. I got 3-3 on the right, ready to go. Here we go. The DC-3 has the luxury of Ted Stevens' two miles of groomed runway for takeoff. That's 30 inches. The power check's good. Power is set. Gear up. Gear up. But in Tuluksak, the frozen, bumpy airstrip will make for a much more dangerous landing. 